Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. This one is by request from you guys. Is this the return of the classic half? Well, I guess you have to watch to find out. As usual, we're gonna do a build in the half 500. We're gonna test thermals, we're gonna do all of that stuff. But first, let's take a bit of a closer look at everything. All right, let's start off with panel removal. There's a single thumb screw for the tempered glass side panel. This is not a captive thumb screw for some bizarre reason, but, and to remove the panel, it just kind of pops off and lifts up and away it goes. Rear panel removal has two captive thumb screws on the solid rear panel. Slide it back and away we go. Give it a yank. Pop panel removal. So there's just two screws that hold it in. Pull this off real quick. And top panel just lifts off. The top panel has a magnetic fan filter, which you can see right here, just flops on and off, bobs your uncle. Comes with a bag full of doohickeys and doodats, basically just screws and standoffs and extra cable ties and everything you need to build your system. The power supply shroud can be removed by undoing a single thumb screw on the rear here. Quite easily just pop out the power supply shroud. And there you go. You can get access to your power supply this way. This is pretty handy. I don't mind having it like this. Sometimes it could make it easier to cable manage because you can just bunch everything up in here and away you go. The maximum power supply length is 180 millimeters. So most standard size power supply should fit in here without too many problems. Towards the front of the case, there's two 3.5 inch spinning rust hard disk sleds that can be slid out, you can actually do 2.5 inch drives as well. It's got pre-drilled holes for that too. And if you'd like, you can remove the whole cage, take out both drive sleds, take out this screw here, lift it up, slide it out, and you can pull the whole cage out. You can leave this out for installing some certain motherboards. EATX boards will hang over the edge, so it's probably better to remove that drive cage so you can get access to that side of the motherboard. Not a big deal, just an extra step. On the rear, there's two 2.5 inch SSD mounts. For such a large case, it doesn't actually have that many drive mounting options. Probably notice this little doohickey here, this little fan. Well, this fan is designed to give you more airflow for your GPU, depending on your GPU as well, because as we know, in a perfect world, you'd have airflow coming from the front and into your GPU, but you know, nothing is quite perfect in the world. So this just adds a little bit of extra angle. If it's something you wanted to use, you can remove this whole bracket as well. We have seen cases that have bottom mounted fans. This mechanism is nice because once again, it does give you an option to angle the fan, but be aware that if you change the airflow direction, you lose some pressure every single degree of change that you make, so. In saying that, there's a pre-installed 120 mil fan. This one is not addressable RGB. There are also these two massive 200 mil fans that are front mounted. We saw this with the H500P and the H500P mesh and the H500M. So from experience, these things throw a lot of air through and make it very chilly inside the PC. There's also another single sickle flow 120 mil addressable RGB fan at the back that uses a four pin PWM fan connector as well. So you got three RGB fans in total. In terms of fan and radiator mounting, you could do a 360 millimeter AIO at the front with the fans on the outside if you wanted to remove those two 200 mil fans, which I wouldn't recommend doing. Leave those, they're quite good. So you can also do, let's say a 280 at the front, 240 at the front. At the top, you can do a 360 mil AIO, 240, 280. In fact, you can move both of these fans from the front to the top of the case as well, if that's something you wanted to do, if you wanted to use that for exhaust. So you do have an option. So let's say, like I said, if you wanted to mount a radiator at the front and you wanted to have exhaust out the top, yeah, just move those front fans to the top and away we go. That could be very, very cool actually. There's an integrated addressable RGB controller as well. You can see that it's got 
four PWM fan outputs, five addressable RGB outputs as well. And it's all controlled by pressing the reset button on the front of the case. You can see that there's only two addressable RGB channels populated and two fan channels populated. Those front fans are only three pin DC powered fans. For the other connectors, in this case, you've got your USB Type-C front panel, you've got your front panel audio, all the lights and switches, connectors for all that stuff to let you know your system's up and running. There's a PWM pass-through, so this will control the fan speed for the front fans and any fans you have plugged into that RGB and PWM hub. And you've got this addressable RGB pass-through as well, so if you wanted to use your motherboard software to control the lighting, you can also go ahead and do that too. For front panel IO, you've got two USB type A ports, a power button and a power light in there as well, a headphone jack and a USB type C port as well. The chassis design itself is loosely based on the Cooler Master H500 chassis. They've reused the old chassis. They've extended it out by adding a little bit of height to the case. So you can have that removable top section. It's a quality of life update. It's kind of like DLC or an HD remaster to the case for that kind of stuff. So the front of the HAP 500 is a mesh front panel and the mesh isn't actually that fine. So it's gonna have fairly good airflow. And I think Cooler Master learned their lesson a couple years ago with their front panel design. This is much better. It's got that classic half styling with these accents here. It's got the old school half logo up the top here. I gotta say that from a styling perspective, maybe it's the nostalgia in me. I kind of like it. <laughs> it. It looks familiar and new at the same time. In terms of motherboard support, it will support from ITX all the way up to EATX boards. But as I mentioned, be aware that for EATX, you're probably gonna need to remove this and then reinstall it to put it back in. Maximum air cooler clearance height, you're looking at around 167 millimeters. So most tower coolers will fit in this case without issue. Maximum GPU clearance is 410 millimeters, but as usual, we'll do the ROG test to show you guys how much space you've got. So here's the ROG 3080 Gundam, and you can see plenty of space for big GPUs like this. And with this case as well, because there is no crossbars for the PCIe slots on the back here, you can use a vertical GPU bracket as well. You may run into issues with that fan at the bottom. So I would probably recommend removing the front fan if you were to be vertically mounting in this case. For cable management, there's quite a few cable tie down points all over the rear of this solid motherboard tray. But just take into account that because of the design of this case, you're losing the ability to hide cables more towards the front of the case. And for clearance between the side panel and the motherboard tray, is 30 millimeters. So the cable management is not gonna look that good on the back of this case. And to be fair, I don't think that's really a big issue with cases that have solid back panels. It doesn't really matter. It's supposed to be convenient enough for you to be able to pull stuff out. So when you're doing your cable management runs, always take that into account. Don't overthink and overcomplicate your cable management because if you need to do anything, you're just gonna waste a heck of a lot of time. That's basically everything you need to know about the HAF 500. Let's build in it and we'll test the thermals and then we'll have a chat about what I think about the new Cooler Master HAF 500. Let's get building.
All right, ladies and gents, hope you enjoyed the build in the Cooler Master HAF 500. Let's quickly take a look at the thermals of the HAF 500. What you're seeing on your screen right now is the thermals are relatively good for a 5900X and a 3080. One thing I did notice is if we put the fan on roughly a 45 degree angle, we did see better GPU thermals by about two to three degrees, depending on whether or not the side panel was on or off, et cetera, et cetera. But whether or not it's strictly necessary to have an additional fan in this case, I'd say is still up for debate. Okay, now that the thermal's out of the way, let's quickly chat about the parts. The CPU is the AMD Ryzen 9 5900X. We put the 5900X on the ASUS ROG Crosshair Hero 8 Dark Hero. Why did I say it like that? I, I can't ever say the name of this board. You know what board it is, okay? You know what board it is. To cool the 5900X, we use the Cooler Master PL360 Flux. It's one of their new coolers. We haven't used it yet and Actually, like from the thermal testing, it does perform quite well. It's got quite a big cold plate on it as well, which is nice to see. This cooler actually supports Threadripper, which I was quite surprised with considering most Cooler Master coolers don't support it without purchasing a secondary bracket. And even that has been hit or miss in the past. So yeah. The RAM is 16 gigs of V-Color Prism at 4133 mega transfers. It's a Gear Seekers edition. It's got a little Gear Seekers logo on it. That's why I use it. Make more stuff with Gear Seekers words and logos on it, and I'll use it more. That's just how it goes. The GPU is the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3080 12 gig OC. The fan frame on the PL360 is actually a Cooler Master fan frame. I don't know if they still make them, but it's a 360mm fan frame. So basically it's got two cables that come off it and it plugs in and bobs your uncle. You've got all of your fans and all that jazz. In terms of all the lighting in this build, I configured it in Asus or Sync and I just made it Unicorn Spew because we haven't done Unicorn Spew in a while and I actually think it suits this build anyway. But if I missed any parts, I'll put a PC part picker list down below in the description so you can peruse that list and see what everything is and all that jazz. Anyway, let's talk about the HAF 500. As far as cable management, from what I showed you guys earlier, like yesterday when I filmed that part of the video, it's not too bad. It's not the best either, but it gets the job done. You've got that 30 mils of clearance between the motherboard tray and the side panel. And I've seen other people complain about the cable management in this case. You can't see the back of the case. It's a solid panel. It doesn't matter. I always say this with cases and solid back panels. It doesn't matter. If you can't see it, the cable management doesn't exist. It's into a void of cable management. Also, like I said as well, you know, if you plan out your cable management and you don't go too ham with making things non-removable, then you won't have a problem with cable management if you need to change stuff. Simple as that. In terms of building in this case, it is fairly easy. It is a large case, but as I mentioned earlier in the video, if you are using an EATX board, you need to remove the hard drive cage and the fan that sits on top of it so you can put the board in then you need to replace it. But also be aware that sometimes front panel connectors can sit right behind that. So, you know, just be aware of the motherboard and everything you're going to be using. I think Cooler Master kind of overlooked it, but at the end of the day, I don't think it's really a huge deal if you're expecting that. And I'm not saying that it's fine that Cooler Master did that because it's a bit of a noob rookie maneuver, but at the same time, there are workarounds. Overall, I think the HAF 500 is a decent enough case. In terms of pricing for the HAF 500 from Cooler Master, you're looking at around 149 USD. I'm not sure about the Australian pricing right now. Also guys, make sure you're subscribed because we've been getting heaps of reports of people saying that YouTube's unsubscribed them again and we're not showing up in their sub feeds. Just make sure you subscribe, please. And like the video if you liked it. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, even though it doesn't do anything. But if you did like it, please hit the like button because it tells the algorithm that, you know, recommend Gear Seekers content to more people because it's been a bit sad lately. <laughs> Anyways, guys, if you like the music you heard here, I make all the music It's available over by clicking the join button or on Patreon or on Floatplane and go to Floatplane for early access to videos just like this one right here. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek and putting the cinematic tings at the end today. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the show.